Hello and welcome to this video on area and perimeter word problems. We're just going to look at some keywords and things so you know what you're supposed to be finding. So in this video, we will discuss how you know uh, what you should be finding in the word problem. We'll look at some keywords and phrases and we'll do a couple examples. So let's look at these images. Let's say you maybe were asked for the amount of fencing you needed to go around a pool or around a yard or maybe the amount of trim or a frame that goes around a picture or the amount of trim that goes around a, a doorway or the size of a label that goes around a can. All of these would be examples of when you'd be trying to find um, the perimeter. So all of these are examples of perimeter. So you know when you're trying to find the perimeter because they'll give you these types of keywords um, around distance, perimeter, and they'd be asking you to find things like the amount of fencing that goes around a yard or the amount of material it takes to wrap around something. So all of those are keywords to lead you to know that you're actually finding the perimeter. So these images are pretty much like the first ones except the poster in the center. And so if, a, if you had a similar situation but they're asking you different questions like how much grass does it take to cover the yard? or um, how much flooring would you need to be able to um, for a room or maybe they'd ask you how was the area of the poster or how much poster board would you need um, then you know that you're finding instead of finding the perimeter you're being asked to find area so you know you're finding area when you see these keywords it's very key if they say what's the number of square units or square feet or square yards. If you're finding the number of square units, then you are finding the area. Or they might say, how much space is inside? Or how much would you need to be able to cover? Those are all keywords that clue you into the fact that you're actually finding area. So here's an example that's kind of fuzzy about Isabella, and she's making a dis display on um, the display board at school. And the board is 10 feet by 6 feet, and it's rectangular in shape. So she needs to add ribbon to the border around the entire display board. So what is the length of the ribbon she needs? And she wants to go around the entire display board. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sketch. And if I had the ability to, I would write on, on my sketch, I would write 6 feet uh, on the shorter side, and I write 10 feet on the longer side. But I can't do that with the program that I'm using right now. And I would think to myself, if I'm asking, if they're find, trying to find the border that goes around, what am I really trying to find? And since the border goes around, then that means we're trying to find the perimeter. So then I'm going to think about how I'm going to find the perimeter and think about the formula for perimeter. So to find the perimeter, I just add the sides. So there are four sides. So I would add 10, that would be the longer side, plus 6, plus 10, plus 6. And then I would get an answer of 32. So 32 feet of ribbon is needed to go around. So that's how I would handle that word problem. So in general, here are some steps to tackling word problems um, that involve area and perimeter. Or circumference could also be the case. So you can write these down. So the first thing I would always do is draw a picture. And then I would label the picture with the dimensions. That means like the length and width they give you or the circumference, I'm sorry, or the, the uh, diameter or radius or whatever they're giving you about the shape. But I would definitely draw a picture of the shape first. Then I would think about from the wording, am I finding area, perimeter, or maybe circumference if it's a circle? And I would decide like how I'm going to tackle the problem. Then I would make sure I look up and find the correct formula that I need for the particular shape that I'm dealing with. And then finally, after I calculate and I use that formula, I would make sure to label my answer. And I need to ask myself, which I think yourself is actually one word, so I'm sorry, but you would have to ask yourself, does this actually make sense? So make sure you kind of do the logic chat test, because if your answer seems strange, just kind of go back through the steps and see maybe if you missed something. So here's one more example before we're through. And the slide kind of jumped ahead, but let's just take it through um, verbally what we should do. So Mary wants some new carpeting for her dining room and her is telling us our dining room is rectangular in shape. So I drew a rectangle, the gray rectangle on the right. 
and I would label that as 8 yards as the longer side and 7.25 as the shorter side. How much carpeting does she need to buy to cover her entire dining room? Well, from the wording, since I'm going to cover the floor with the carpeting, that tells me that I'm going to be finding the area. So then I would look up the formula for an area of a rectangle, which is base times height. Then I would write 8 yards times 7.25 yards. And then after that, I would calculate it, which gives me 58 square yards of carpet. And notice how when I was finished, I labeled my answer. So here are the steps again to uh, tackling word problems that are area and perimeter and circumference. And I hope that this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.